Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at a budget standard or modern deck. This week we're taking a look at Blue-White Approach in Standard, which is essentially a Blue-White Control deck using Approach of the Second Sun as its main win condition. So Approach of the Second Sun is a 7 mana sorcery, and the first time that you cast it you just gain 7 life, and then you get to put it back into your library 7th from the top. Then the second time that you cast Approach of the Second Sun, if it resolves, you just win the game on the spot. So that's a pretty neat way to close out the game. And then of course the rest of the deck is blue for counter spells and card draw spells and white for removal spells mainly. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with a singleton copy of Unsummon, just a cheap interactive spell to return a creature to the opponent's hand, just to buy you some time while you try to cast your approaches. Then we've got the full four copies of Blessed Alliance, which is a nice removal spell with Escalate, make the opponent sacrifice an attacking creature, and if we pay an additional two generic mana we can also gain four life, so those are the two most often used modes. Then we also have two copies of Immolating Glare, which just destroys an attacking creature at instant speed. We've got four copies of Sensor, which can counter a spell unless the opponent pays one, and also has Cycling. So once we cast the first approach, Cycling also just helps us get to the second copy faster if we don't already have a second copy in hand. Then we have two copies of Stasis Snare, which also has Flash, so we can play it at instant speed to exile a creature, so we don't have to deal with recursive threats. We have four copies of Supreme Will, which is also very important in this deck. So this is also a split card that can either counter a spell unless the opponent pays three, or we can look at the top four cards and then choose one, put it into our hand, and the rest goes to the bottom of our library. What's neat about Supreme Will is that if we cast our first copy of Approach of the Second Sun, and then we cast a Supreme Will, we can just easily get rid of the top four cards of our library and get to our second copy of Approach a lot faster. We also have three copies of Cast Out, which is similar to Stasis Nair, but can also deal with non-creature permanents, like Planeswalkers, and also has Cycling, which is nice. Then our card draw spells here are four copies of Glimmer of Genius, which lets us scry to and then draw to, the energy not being relevant in this build. So scry to also just helps us dig through our deck a lot faster. And then Hieroglyphic Illumination, which has Cycling, and if we cast it for four mana, we can also just draw two. And then a spicy copy of Dovin Ban, which is a nice 4 mana blue white planeswalker that with his plus 1 can give a creature minus 3 minus 0 and prevent activated abilities from being used. And the minus 1 gains us 2 life and draws us a card. And then the emblem can also be pretty annoying for the opponent. And then, a very important in the deck, 4 copies of Fumigate, which just destroys all creatures and gains us life for each creature destroyed this way. And of course, as you'll notice, we don't have any creatures ourselves, it buys us time, so we can cast our approach. And then, of course, 3 copies of Approach of the Second Sun. Nice if you can cast the second copy right after the first one, if you have 2 in hand. But of course, you don't want to draw too many 7 mana spells that don't do anything early in the game, so that's why we only have 3 copies. Then the mana base, we have one copy of Blinded Cataract, which we can also sacrifice to draw two cards, and we can do that at instant speed, so we can still keep up all our counter spells, which is nice. And then four Irrigated Farmland, which we can also cycle for two mana late in the game, when we don't need those lands anymore, so that's also nice to get closer to our second approach. And then just eight islands, eight plains, and four prairie stream. If you want to make the deck even more budget, you can replace fumigates with planar outbursts, which are a lot cheaper on Magic Online. So that's also an option you can consider. Then the sideboard, we've got two copies of Authority of the Consoles against the mono red deck, so all those haste creatures come into play tapped. An additional copy of planar outburst against the zombie decks and maybe some of the green creature decks. Then three copies of a Regal Caracal, which comes in against the mono red decks. Just a nice body that comes with two lifelinking creatures as well, so that can help stem the bleeding. And one copy of a Limvala the Preserver, which does a similar job of gaining us some life and stabilizing the battlefield. Then one Dispel for those control mirrors. Two copies of Aether Meltdown, which are mainly against the vehicle decks and cards like Scrap Heap Scrounger, which otherwise keep coming back. One Jace's Defeat, also against other blue decks, can also counter Torrential Gearhulk, which is important. Two copies of Negate, mainly for control decks. A copy of Jace and Raveler of Secrets, when we need additional card draw. And then one copy of Sphinx of the Final Word, which is also great in control mirrors. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw and this hand looks acceptable. We've got interaction with Supreme Will and Cast Out and we already have our approach. Could get in trouble here if our opponent has a fast start with one and two drops as we see a Dread Wanderer from the opponent. So not the card we wanted to see here as we're up against a zombie. So cards we want to draw here include a card like Fumigate would be great here to draw. We're going to lead with planes and we might consider cycling the cast out. Also don't have double white yet in case we do draw a Fumigate. So definitely considering cycling this cast out end of turn. Opponent did not play a two drop so that's good. And there's our second white source at least, and another Supreme Will. All right, let's play Island Say Go. And hope that these two Supreme Wills can buy us enough time. Opponent hits us down to 16. And doesn't play anything, that's good. So now we have our Supreme Will at the ready and if they don't cast anything we need to counter then we can just use Supreme Will to look at the top four. There's the opponent's third land. Will we see a zombie lord here? We do. Which will get countered. So opponent missing a land drop there was very helpful. Alright, and Blast Alliance, not a bad draw either, so now we can use Blast Alliance to make the opponent sacrifice a Dread Wanderer and gain 4 life, or we can just keep up Supreme Will. And they go for a Diagraph Colossus, which would be a 3-3, but the problem is that it can make additional zombies if your opponent has a 1-drop. So I think we do just Supreme Will here, counter it and take our two damage. Also since we don't have a fumigate yet we don't want our opponent to make lots of 2-2 zombies. Alright. So we have five mana, two lands in hand, so we will get to approach into another approach. So as long as the opponent doesn't have a broken turn here I think we should be able to get there. What we don't want to see is another Diagraph Colossus. Now we will cast with Escalate, so target player gains 4, target opponent sacrifices attacking creature, so we will gain 4 life and opponent has to sacrifice an attacking creature. So we'll go back up to 16 and let's see what the follow up is here, Relentless Dead, that's fine. 2-2 two, two Menace and nothing else. And there's a Stasis Snare even, so we can Stasis Snare the Relentless Dead if we wish to do so. And then we just get to Approach and the following turn Approach once again and just win the game on the spot. And game 1 we shouldn't be expecting any hand disruption from the opponent. As we see Lord of the Accursed, which pumps the Relentless Dead and we're just gonna stasis snare the relentless dead here. Opponent's gonna fatal push their own relentless dead, which is fine. They still can't pay for the relentless dead's ability to return it, but this does put an additional zombie in the graveyard, which can be relevant for future relentless deads or diagraph colossi. With only a Lord of the Accursed in play, we should be able to just win here. So approach number one. And pass the turn. Back to 23. Another Lord. So we go to 20. And then we're just going to cast another approach from hand. And that's going to do it. Alright. 
onto sideboarding where definitely want the additional planar outburst then our deck is pretty well set up for this matchup after sideboard it does get more tricky since they do get cards like transgress the mind which can take away some of our sweepers or approaches uh, limvala is also a consideration i don't think we want regal caracal here when we keep in all our sweeper effects yeah i think the only card we want is planar outburst card i could consider cutting is either the unsummon could also consider taking out something like a hieroglyphic illumination or a dovin ban the opponent's gonna take out some of their dead removal spells and replace them with hand disruption but that's also gonna slow them down a little bit so i don't think we need the unsummon and i think we'll try it like this we could also consider siding in the jace if things slow down then having an additional planeswalker is always nice maybe we'll bring it in on the play and on the draw we'll just keep it in the sideboard all right this hand looks keepable we've got sensor turn two supremo turn three and then we've got a glimmer as well opponent does have the turn one dread wonder which is not what we want to see Let's see if they have a 2-drop to follow up. They do, Metallic Mimic, that's also unfortunate. So we could cycle the sensor, but I think we have to keep it to counter a potential 3-drop here. Otherwise, we're not really interacting with the opponent, as we do draw the plane, so that does help somewhat. Since now we also have the option of Blessed Alliance. Hoping the opponent taps out here. Instead they just play a Relentless Dead. Which comes in with a plus one plus one counter. So we will be using Blessed Alliance here. To make the opponent sacrifice an attacking creature. Which is just going to get rid of the Dread Wanderer. And we'll still take two. Alright, there's a cast out. So let's say go with Supremo and Sensor at the ready. Lord of the Accursed is gonna get Supremo. But we're still gonna take five. There's our second white source, so now we get to cast out the Relentless Dead or the Metallic Mimic. Since I don't think we can take a turn off Glimmering here when we're at 11, facing 5 power. Diagraph Colossus, which would be a 4-4, but we can't counter it here, so... Could consider cycling a sensor to hope to draw another Supreme Will. But I don't think that's great, so what we actually could consider here is just letting the Diagraph Colossus resolve, take 5 and then hope to glimmer into a sweeper, rather than using cast out on the Relentless Dead. I think that might be our best bet here. So we'll take 5. And end of turn, cast a Glimmer. And there's a Fumigate, put a Glimmer on the bottom, Fumigate on top. Alright, so now we get to play our Prairie Stream. And Fumigate, opponent does get to return their Relentless Dead here. But at least we gain some life. So they are returning the Relentless Dead rather than putting the Dread Wanderer back into play. So there's the Relentless Dead. And nothing else, so that's good. Let's play our Cataract and say go. Opponent 
opponent with a Liliana's Mastery, which we get to censor here. That's nice. And we also get to cast out the Relentless Dead. Planar Outburst is a nice one to have. And now we get to say go with Glimmer at the ready. Crib Breaker is fine. Lord of the Accursed. I think in response we want to Glimmer. In case we find a counter spell instead two lands that we can put on the bottom. So Supreme Will we could counter the Lord. Or we can just Planar Outburst, which I think we want to do here. So we can use our Supreme Will to look at the top four. And Approach we definitely want here. So we'll take that. And doesn't really matter in which order we put the rest. So we could Approach here, but then... We do take quite a beating, so I would rather just cast our Planar Outburst and then keep up Sensor and hope our opponent doesn't draw a Transgress the Mind that they get to cast. So let's Planar Outburst those two away. And then say go. There's a Metallic Mimic, which is fine. And the opponent's gonna return their Dread Wanderer from the graveyard. So, while the opponent still has 5 mana, they could have another Liliana's Mastery. So I actually don't think we want to cycle the sensor quite yet. Instead, we get to play our approach. Gain 7 and still have Sensor at the ready, as well as Blast Alliance. They have Liliana's Mastery, they probably want to cast it main phase, but they drew another land, so they can play around Sensor now if they have another 5-drop. Which they do, but it's a Dark Salvation, which we can't counter here. And they come into play with plus 1 plus 1 counter, so that's gonna be quite painful here. So... We could Blast Alliance right now to prevent 2 damage, but I would rather Blast Alliance next turn to also gain 4 life. So that means that we just cycle the sensor now that our opponent hit their 6th land. So we'll take some damage. Cycle the sensor, which also gets us closer to our approach. And if we, drew, and if we just draw an approach, that also wins this game. Fumigate, quite a good draw here. So we can just cast that. Gain some more life. And pause a turn with two Blast Alliance. Opponent returns Dread Wander. Hieroglyphic Illumination, not bad. So we can just pass. Another Liliana's Mastery. I think we want to Illumination in response. Draw a Cycle Land and a Land, so um, I guess we can Cycle or Cycle Land in case we draw Supreme Will. And there we go, Supreme Will. We could counter the Liliana's Mastery, but actually we can just cast our Supreme Will, find our approach, and win the game. So... I'll take three. Supreme Will, approach of the second sun. Any order. Untap and cast approach. And there we go. Zombies, a pretty decent matchup for the deck running lots of removal and sweepers. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw and 
think this hand's keepable just because we have this one mana cycler that can hopefully help us find the land plus we get an extra draw yeah we'll keep would be nice to draw a white source so we can have immolating glare at the ready forest into a tune doesn't tell us much could be black green could be teamer could be pummeler all right prairie stream is a nice one so if we play an island then we can cycle the illumination which we are probably going to do no matter what but by playing the prairie stream we do have access to immolating glare next turn should our opponent play two drop we have to kill so i think we still play the prairie stream tapped here and if the opponent doesn't have anything we need to glare we can just cycle the illumination at this turn still works out fine Put on cycles a thicket could also be a ramp deck as we see another tune and an island all right opponent's not doing anything i think we cycle the illumination find a plane so we could also cycle the cast out which i'm not opposed to given that we have all these supreme worlds anyways all right let's play out islands and say go and the opponent scoops it up all right interesting so don't really know what the opponent's up to but probably a team or energy deck is my guess how do we want to sideboard against potentially team or energy unsummon isn't really necessary they're probably going to have a bunch of negates after sideboard i think we'll go with the jace and try it like this and then we can reevaluate after the second game all right so this hand two supreme worlds four lands uh, could get owned by a quick start with something like a long tusk cup if our opponent's running that but i think we have to keep this there's another attune Bless alliance not bad so we'll lead with a prairie stream and then we can go plains plains into the other prairie stream mountain and there's a long tusk cup but we did pick up blast alliance which is nice another prairie stream opponent up to three energy into rogue refiner can't counter that one put them back to four energy they're gonna attack with the cub then we are going to blast alliance making the opponent sacrifice an attacking creature there's a sensor so now we get to keep up supreme will we'll probably take a few hits from this rogue refiner And a tireless tracker we can just censor here. And there's the tap land. And alright, there's our Jace. We'll find out if he's good in the matchup or not. We'll take another hit from the Rogue Refiner. And then we'll see if our opponent has another threat we need to counter or if we can Supreme will looking at the top four. All right, black mana, so they might have Nickel Bolas in their deck somewhere. And Bristling Hydra definitely getting countered. We could let the Hydra resolve and then look at the top four looking for a sweeper, but if we don't find one, then Bristling Hydra is going to be a problem. We could chase Bounce the Rogue Refiner or just chase plus one. Uh, Glory Bringer could be an issue as it can kill the Jace at seven loyalty together with the Rogue Refiner. So, 
we might still want to keep up Supremo instead. But this actually seems like an okay spot to Jace. And hope our opponent doesn't do anything too good on their turn. So we'll actually just plus here rather than bouncing the value creature. Cast out, I don't think we need since we already have a stasis snare. Could deal with a resolved planeswalker like a Chandra. But I think we still bottom this since we need lands. Opponent has an opening to resolve a planeswalker. Doesn't look like they have a glory bringer. Chase down to 3 loyalty. Servant of the Conduit. Into Whirler Virtuoso. Alright, if we can find a Fumigate with our Jace, that would be nice. Plus one. And yep, we'll take that one. And we'll cast it, leaving up a Prairie Stream. Alright, so that was a good draw. And Jace remains in play. Opponent didn't have a Glorybringer last turn, so I doubt they'll have one now. Just another Whirler Virtuoso. They do still have 12 energy, so it could still be a problem. Cast out, so let's just keep plussing, looking for lands. And farmland is a land, technically, but it does enter tapped. So we would not be able to cast approach this turn. Opponent can make four tokens. We can stasis near the virtuoso. What if we bottom this? Then we might miss another land drop. I think we do still bottom this just because getting an untapped land would be very good here. Instead we find a glimmer. Which we can actually cast main phase just to hit our land drop. And then we can still use our stasis snare. Fumigate is actually also not bad, so I think I'll actually keep both since the opponent is going to make a bunch of Thopters here and then we can Fumigate those next turn. Yeah, I think we want to keep up Supreme Will here, no need to Stasis Snare quite yet, so the opponent is going to make a whole bunch of Thopters. Do they leave 3 energy? Nope, they're going to go all in. We will let them untap. And there's a Chandra Flamecaller, which we definitely want to counter. So glad that we didn't Stasis Nair right away. This does mean that Jace dies, but we still get to Fumigate, get rid of everything and be in an okay spot. So Jace dies, we go to 16. And now we get to Fumigate and keep up. Blast Alliance, I guess. Definitely want to play out our land still. And alright, our opponent scoops it up, so looks like Blue White is pretty decent against Teamer as well. Opponent didn't have any interaction in the form of Negate, which if that countered, one of our Fumigates could have been a problem for sure, and our draws were also quite fortunate. So yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this looks like a keep. We've got an unsummon for early interaction, some lands, some draw spells, a removal spell. Opponent with Island Go, so this could be the mirror. I think we'll lead with a tapped Prairie Stream. I guess we could just go island into plains into prairie stream. So I guess we'll do that. Opponent cycles illumination. So this is probably the mirror match. Could also be blue red. Yep. As we see a mountain. Alright, this should be an okay matchup given that they have lots of dead removal spells. I guess we also do, but there's our approach. So let's go Plains and go. I'm not sure if we want to cycle the farmland yet. Since we do want to keep hitting our land drops. Third land and 
already a decision point. I think we do cycle, given that we have illumination to keep hitting land drops. All right, lands are good. So let's go Prairie Stream, say go. Sweltering Sun cycled by the opponent. All right, there's a sensor. Just pass, could have cycled the cast out there, but uh, might need it for a planeswalker. Five mana. So I think we cast the illumination, could get censored by the opponent, but I think that's still okay. Resolves. There's some Supreme Wills, which are nice. So, yeah, let's just pause the turn and discard Fumigate. Opponent has a Supreme Will that resolves. Discard Fumigate. So we want to keep up a counter spell for a gear hulk. So I think we just supreme will here looking at the top rather than casting our glimmer since that would not allow us to censor a gear hulk. Opponent glimmers in response. That's fine. And I think we just take the illumination since we still have a land and the illumination can also help us hit land drops and put them back in any order and then we'll also cycle our cast out at this point. All right, plenty of glimmers. So let's pass it back. Opponent has land number seven. So could hit them with a glimmer, but the same reasoning as last turn applies that uh, now we have to keep up Supreme Will to counter a Gear Hulk. So I think I would rather just cast the Illumination, which is fine if they counter it. And yep, there's a Gear Hulk, which casts the Glimmer. It does give us an opening for approach. All right, uh, we could unsummon the Gear Hulk right now so that we don't get hit by it, since we are likely going to cast our approach next turn, then the Gearhulk would still be in play, so we could just cycle the farmland right now instead of unsummoning. I think I like unsummoning though. Opponent also had to discard a Magma Spray, and now we get to cast our approach. There's another Gear Hulk for an Illumination. All right, I think we want to Glimmer main phase here. And Dovin Ban's actually not bad, but also not that great. I think we just bottom both and just get closer to our approach. All right, there's an emulating glare, which isn't bad. So let's play our planes and say go. We might have a fight over this gear hulk with the emulating glare. gets negated, that's fine. Rather get this negated than our approach. And yep, yeah, we'll take our hits.
And then we can cycle the farmland end of turn. And there's another approach. And another approach. Wow. Uh, yeah, I guess we... Just go for it here. Keep jamming approaches until our opponent runs out of counterspells. And disallow. Take five. Illumination main phase. At this point I don't mind cycling a sensor just to hit land drops. Blast Alliance. Alright, so now we can approach again. This time with Supreme Will backup. Put on the glimmers in response, that's fine. And we win the game, sweet. On to sideboarding, where we definitely want to take out a bunch of our removal spells, like Fumigate. Um, emulating Glare is also not great. I think I would prefer the Blast Alliance, since it has more applications. Unsummon is also not great. Um, the rest seems okay. Stasis Nair could also potentially go. Definitely want the Sphinx, definitely want our Dispels or Jace's Defeat, or Jace, definitely want the Negates. So Blast Alliance is a card that could get cut. The question is which is better, Stasis Snare, Blast Alliance, or Immolating Glare? I think I prefer the Stasis Snare over the Blast Alliance, actually, as it can take care of something like uh, Dragon Master Outcast, while the Blast Alliance would be a bit awkward in that spot. And then the question is how many sweepers do we want, how many Caracals do we want a Limvala? Guess we'll bring in the Limvala just as another threat. Can probably bring in a Caracal and a Fumigate just to hedge against potential sideboard plans involving creatures from the opponent. We still have two Stasis Snare, two Blast Alliance, three Cast Outs as removal, plus all our counter spells. So this looks okay. So we'll submit and see what happens. All right, this hand. Looks okay. I think we'll keep. Opponent leads with Island. We'll lead with a tapped farmland. And there's a thing in the ice. Alright, that's their sideboard plan in a matchup, which is fine. We still have a Blast Alliance in hand. So let's pass it back. opponent on mono islands. Uh, yeah, we'll just pass it back, I think. No need to cycle yet. Opponent is going to Supreme Will end of turn. I think we can consider censoring that. Thing in the eyes goes to three counters. Bodon seems to be stuck on three lands, as are we. So we can Supreme Will just to dig, but then we're playing into the opponent's counter spell, so I think we just say go, and then Supreme Will end of turn, even though we are missing a land drop here. Opponent's gonna negate. And there's a sensor, so I think we just want to Supreme Will right now, just to hit our lands. Opponent could have a dispel, but uh, cycling I think is worse here since the odds of finding a land are 
not as great, so let's just Supreme Will again. Alright, plenty of lands. I think we'll just take the island since then we can still cycle. And we do put an approach to the bottom. We'll put the approach closest to the top, I guess. Play the island, say go. Opponent does nothing, we'll cycle sensor. There's a farmland. And now we can keep hitting our land drops, which is nice. Plenty of answers for the thing in the ice. So we can Supreme Will here. Plays around sensor more than the illumination. So I think we'll go with that. But I imagine they would have cycled sensors by now. There's just a disallow. Could dispel the disallow. Seems okay to do that. And Jace's defeat is interesting, but I think we just want a lands here. So we'll take the Prairie Stream. There's a Stasis Snare for the thing in the ice. But I kind of want to fight over these Blast Alliances. So let's cast the Illumination Main Phase since I don't want this to get countered. Alright, there's an approach. Pause the turn back. And I actively want the opponent to counter our Blast Alliance here, should they go for a transformation on Thing in the Ice this turn. They do just Harness Lightning just to transform their Thing in the Ice. That's fine. And now we hit them with Sacrifice an Attacking Creature. And they just let it happen. Alright, I think we just go for the approach. Doesn't matter if this gets countered. It's just looking at whether or not we cast two copies of approach. So even if they counter this, it's not that bad for us. The only downside, of course, is that the card would not get shuffled back into our deck or seventh card down in the deck, so we're less likely to find another copy. There's a Supreme Will, which is great. So now we can just pass with Glimmer and Supreme Will. Opponent with a Dragon Master Outcast, that's fine. We'll Glimmer end of turn. Cast out planes, I think we can bottom both. Two islands. Could have cast the Stasis Snare end of turn, but I think, let's see, six or more lands, so opponent still only has five lands, so not a concern yet. So I think we can just pass. Opponent does not attack wisely, playing around another Blast Alliance. Now we will Stasis Snare, hoping to fight over this, basically. But the opponent lets it happen. I think we Supreme Will. And find the approach. Put the Jays on top. So five, six, seven. So we could approach with negate backup here. If the opponent also has the spells, that could get awkward. But ooh, I think waiting until we also have sensor backup doesn't make a ton of sense. I think we just go for it. There's a disallow. Let's negate the disallow. Do they have a sensor as well? And we win the match. Sweet. That's going to do it for this gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content patreon is the place to go.